Hello Capricorn, welcome to your August 2022 reading. This reading will resonate with you if you have Capricorn Sun and Rising. Now my readings are usually for Sun, Moon, Rising, but this month we are doing things differently. This month we are looking at your shadow self. This is the self that you either repress or you're completely unconscious of. So subsequent to this intro, there will be a four minute tutorial. I want you to listen to it. I don't want you to fast forward through it because it will allow you to understand what shadow self is all about. Now, before we go any further, what I would like to do is cleanse your space today, my love, with my Palo Santo. As I do this, I want you to find a space or perhaps a quiet nook, put on your headphones or your air, uh, air pa AirPods, rather, and perhaps listen to this reading and watch this reading in a semi-meditative state because that will allow for my words as well as the energy and the messages to sip through your conscious brain all the way to your subconscious and unconscious brain. What else can I tell you? Shadow readings are somewhat triggering, so if it does trigger you, then I humbly request that you save this reading for a later point and then listen to it, or you can listen to it incrementally. There are four decks, two oracle and two tarot that I will be using for this reading. The description, the link rather to those decks are in the description box below. For the main energy, I have used Rumi Oracle this month, and the link to that Oracle deck is also in the description box below. The video in which I randomly pick one card for each zodiac sign for every month is also provided in the description box below, should you fancy taking a peek at it. All that said, let's listen in to the four-minute tutorial, and I will catch you on the other side. Changing things up for the month of August 2022. This is going to be a different flavor of reading. August is the month of Leo season as well as Virgo season. It is also the month of summer. And on August 8th, we have the Lionsgate portal. For me, that is one of the biggest portals out there for manifestation. And one of the ways we manifest is by unblocking and unlocking our understanding of our shadow self. As human beings, we exist on this third dimensional plane, otherwise known as planet Earth. And the main purpose and the main lesson of this existence is to balance our dualities and our polarities, balancing between light and shadow. So for this month, the reading will focus on our shadow side. For most of you, you are familiar with your light side which is your light self ruled by your first house on your natal chart. The shadow self is ruled by the seventh, the eighth, and the twelfth house. If you don't know what your natal chart looks like, there are tons of free websites. Just Google natal chart. You would need your birth date, your birth month, the time of your birth, and the city of your birth. And the system or the software should be able to produce you a natal chart. Let's take a closer look at light self and shadow self as it relates to different houses. Let's start with your light self, which is ruled by your first house, which is essentially your sun sign. So when you say you're a Taurus or a Virgo or a Capricorn, Gemini, Aquarius, you're essentially referring to your sun sign or your first house. This is how you appear to the world. I'm not saying that's your false self, but it only makes up of 2% of your overall natal chart and your personality, frankly. Let's look at your shadow self. Your shadow self is a combination of your seventh house, your eighth house, and your 12th house in your natal chart. Let's look at these individual houses and what they mean. So the seventh house is ruled by, naturally ruled by the sign Libra. It doesn't mean your seventh house is in Libra, and I want to make this absolutely clear, it is naturally, that's the natural ruler of the seventh house is Libra and the planet is Venus. Now your seventh house could be anything, any sign, depending on your sun sign. So seventh house is all about marriage, partnership, relationship. It's also about conflict resolution or how you show up 
in a conflict, in a relationship dynamic. So that is one third of your shadow self. Now, the next house is the eighth house. The natural ruler of this house is Scorpio. Now, your eighth house could have a completely different sign, but the natural ruler is Scorpio and the natural planet that rules the eighth house is Pluto. That's the planet of transformation. Whereas the seventh house, Libra, Venus, planet of or the house of balance and stability. Twelfth, eighth house is the house of transformation. This is where you find out things about your relationship with money and abundance, sex, your adaptability, your awareness about yourself and the universe around you. So again, that makes up another one third of your shadow self. And finally, the 12th house, the natural ruler or the natural sign that rules this house is Pisces, which is ruled by Neptune, very watery. This house is all about your imagination, your dreams, your goals. It's also about secrets, clandestine relationship. So these three houses make up your shadow self. Capricorn, welcome back to your reading. So hopefully the four minute tutorial was very helpful. You have some idea, I mean, clearly the the intent is not for you to have a PhD in shadow self today. It's, it's for you to know enough for you to be curious, for you to be intrigued, so that A, you would listen to the remainder of this reading as well as you will take your time to explore your own shadow self. That all said, the main energy card that I've drawn for you ahead of time. Let's see if I can make this card focus. We don't have enough uh, light where I am recording this today because of the weather. It's been raining. It's been raining since this morning. So this card is called Sacred Soul Sister. I apologize if this is not focusing well enough. And the number is 37. Look at the depiction of this card. There are three individuals, and this is Rumi's, uh, not Rumi, uh, Rasoli's painting. This oracle deck was uh, conceived by El uh, Elena Fairchild, and the illustrations were done by Rasoli. Uh, he is a Persian painter, and he has translated through his work, Rumi's work, beautifully. So this particular card talks about soul tribes. This particular card talks about unity, talks about support, community support, support of your tribe. It also talks about as you embark on your journey to find your own truth, you need a community of people around you who's going to support that truth, who's going to support your growth, who's going to support your ascension. So given that we are reading about your shadow side today, the question is, what is the blockage or what are the blockage as it relates to your 7th, 8th and your 12th house? And I'm going to keep my channeling to a minimum today. I usually channel a lot. If you're a returning subscriber, I thank you for your patience and love and support. If you're new on my channel, welcome, stay along, stick around with us, subscribe, click the bell icon. So if you're a new subscriber, then you probably don't know this. When I take one Oracle card, I channel, and the rest of the cards that fall on the table are essentially confirmation of the Oracle card that I've already channeled. And that's where the clear audience, clear voice, as well as our medium, as well as my rather, mediumship come into play. All that said, what I would like to see is one oracle card from each deck on your seventh, eighth, and twelfth, and we like we would like to find out where the blockages are. Seventh is about your partnership, marriage, relationship, as well as your conflict resolution style. Eighth is about your transformation, so we need to see what's blocking it. Nine is your unconscious brain, the brain where you store trauma, you store shame, right? Okay, so clearly there is resistance, there is denial. You blame yourself for something. Clearly there's also this idea that you don't need people around you. And in turn, you are actually delaying the process of your soul's journey. All right, guilt, that word came to me. So I'm going to put this on this house. Guilt is on the seventh house. I was feeling that 
when I was saying shame and trauma and all that, I was feeling that guilt. One more card for your 12th house. Let me take the card first, Capricorn, and then I will tell you what I'm seeing. So allow me a moment. Sometimes, depending on the energy that I'm tipping in, it takes a while for these cards to come out. So I can also feel a little bit of a resistance. Blame. Remember I said blame? There you go. Blame is on the table. All right. Let me take a few more cards. And at the bottom of the deck, although I'm not taking bottom of the deck energy today, but it says forgiveness. So you're not forgiving yourself. You're not forgiving people from your tribe. There's a lot going on. This is a collective reading. So take what resonates, leave the rest. Clearly, I won't be able to pinpoint everybody's storyline. My channel is growing. We're close to 2,000 subscribers. So I do thank you for all your support, your constant outpouring of love. And that's what I mean, mean by Sacred Soul Sister. So even if you take this collective, my YouTube channel, as, a, as an example, right? Imagine... You come to my channel, you listen to a reading, you go to the comment section, and you find a comment that, you know, resonates with you, and then you strike up a friendship with that person. These are the kind of support and love and, and community presence that we need in our life, right? Human beings are social animals. We're not supposed to tread this life, this planet, and perhaps this universe alone. And even if, if we are supposed to tread this universe alone as a lonely soul, I think the understanding is that 3D earthly experience is supposed to be surrounded by people that we love, people that we like to support, and vice versa. Some of the cards that are falling, you got pride on top of guilt, you got new beginning on top of abundance, and that's falling on top of your of your eighth house which doesn't surprise me at all i got so many cards for you i'm going to put them back because i need one so i'm going to shuffle because i need to find a good card to fall on your blame card these cards are very direct to the point i don't feel like i need to explain too much today the energy is extremely precise and to the point i thought sagittarius's reading was precise and to the point I feel like your reading is you have forgiveness again from another deck and you have patience and I usually I mean up until now the nine readings that I've done I haven't taken two cards out of one deck for one particular house position but I'm gonna do this for you because look at this bottom of the deck from one deck and forgiveness it came out twice I'm going to take that card as well from the bottom of the deck just because it is repeating the message. Oh my God. Okay. There's so much going on. So let me get myself all sorted out. Right? I am recording with very low sunlight. So work with me on this. Your first card on the seventh house, on the house of your partnership, relationship, and marriage is called guilt. And re let's read this together, Capricorn. I release any beliefs that no longer assist in my soul's growth, right? So guilt, blame, shame, these sort of things usually stunt your growth. And then there is pride sitting on top of it. This is number 10. Where else did we see a number 10 card? 37. Can you see it now? It's focusing now. 37 is 10. 19 reduces to 10. That's your pride card. So when it comes to your relationship, Capricorns, and this is what the soul, sacred soul sister card was saying to you. When it comes to relationship, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to a connection, it doesn't have to be romantic connection, right? It could be any connection. Um, siblings, family members, co-workers, friendship circle. When it comes to all of that, you have this drastic approach to life. And what I mean by that, you either blame people, which we're going to explore, because blame and guilt goes hand in hand, right? We will explore, explore that on your 12th house. You have this 
on should I put this? I'm looking for the right word. Having pride is not a bad thing, right? Having pride in in a way that it helps you be more truthful, be more honest, because people with pride will have the affinity to be honest, truthful, will have integrity, because otherwise it's going to hurt their pride, which is the good side of pride, which is the light side of pride, right? But your pride is really eating you up inside, eating you up inside to the extent that because of your pride, you're maybe not repairing a relationship with somebody. It could be anybody. Because of your pride, you're not owning up to your mistakes. Because of your pride, you're not reaching out to people. Because of your pride, you're not reaching out to uh, friends or family or community member for help. And I think part of that is that you feel guilty. Maybe as a child, when you're grow growing up in your household, and again, take what resonates, maybe you were taught that if you're not self-sufficient, if you can't fend for yourself, then there is something wrong with you, then there is something not adequate about you. I think you have been taught growing up the, the correlation, or there is apparently a correlation between self-sufficiency and as well as self-adequacy. So you correlate the the art of being self-sufficient, of that of being self-adequate. And us being, us the human race being a very social animal, we are like the dolphins, right? We always move in pods. I mean, dolphin is not the only species of animal that move in pods. If you look at into the natural world, you're an earth sign, Capricorn. If you look into the natural world, you will see that most animal species move in pods. They need their community, right? They usually don't eat their own. And here, here we are, human race. We kill our own. We kill our brothers and sisters. But anyway, so there is that guilt. You've been taught that if you cannot take care of yourself, if you cannot... If you don't bottle up, I think this take care is not, you know, just the healthy self-sufficient. I'm, I'm unto thyself, uh, 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 fully sustaining, efficient unit. It's not about that. I think your self-sufficiency is almost to the point that you bottle yourself up. You have been taught that you, should, you shouldn't open yourself up to people. You shouldn't, you know, go to people for help. You shouldn't op uh, discuss your your internal thoughts with individuals. So, in one hand, you pride yourself being this this stoic statue of a person. On the other hand, you feel guilty that that there's a side of you. I think you feel guilty because. There's a side of you, you feel like, because you have been so much the stoic figure that every time you break down, even in the privacy of your own home, every time that you break down, because the, the stoicism can be sustainable for only so long. You can be stoic and you can be buttoned up emotionally, physically for so long because it will break down at some, some point, right? Mind you, the card before the death card is hanged man right? In tarot, hanged man is 12, death is number 13. Don't forget that. And the card before the tower card is the devil, which is 15. So where am I going with this? What I'm saying is you can hang upside down for only so long until the death of that self happens. You can um, feel and feed some of your toxic traits or your toxic behaviors for only so long until the tower moment happens until that moment happens when it when it breaks you free from your shackles from your chain of servitude and this servitude is to your pride this servitude is to your guilt this servitude is you not being able to forgive yourself we'll get to it in two seconds let's move on so that was your seventh house one of the reasons your relationships are not authentic. Your relationships don't serve themselves. Your relationships are perhaps so, uh, short-lived. Your relationships are not honest because you have this thing where you think you have to be the giver. That's the word I was looking for. 
you feel like as a Capricorn, as the authority of everything, because most Capricorns I know are CEOs or CAOs, you think you need to be the authority on everything. If you don't become the authority, if you don't become the problem solver, then there is a level of guilt that has been built in you. Your eighth house of transformation, my darling, says the abundance and new beginnings, number one. So 10 reduces to one, 10 reduces to one. We have another one. There's so many ending of a cycle. Your main energy card is number 10. Your seventh house is number 10. You're done with this old self. You have to start a new beginning. And that's what it's saying. So you, what you are resisting in your transformative house, right? The eighth house, which is naturally ruled by Scorpio, is this. Let, let us read this together. Abundance. I am a limitless, limitless. I'm having a bit of a tongue twister today. I am a limitless being and I can manifest whatever I desire in this physical reality. Damn right, you can. Look at this. You've got two new beginnings. Abundance for me is a new beginning. And look at the colors. Look at these colors, the pinks, the oranges, and a bit of a hint of blue, right? These are different chakra colors. Orange is all about your sacral chakra. Sacral chakra is where we have our reproductive organs. And guess what? That's the area of creativity, right? So you are ready to give birth to new realities. You're ready to give birth to abundance. But may that be abundance of, of health, wealth, of relationship doesn't matter there is a new beginning that you were resisting this transformative beginning that you're resisting because you're holding on like a hanged man onto your pride onto the guilt that has been built into you now your 12th house which is the house of unconsciousness which is the house of hang on there we go which is the house of your fear, your shame, your guilt, your blame. And it says, I accept responsibility for my well-being. And this is the problem because the first card, the first card, I'm going to put this here. Okay. Just bear with me for a second. So the cards that fell on that card is forgiveness and patience. So you have been taught as a child, and this is the trauma. This is the inner child wound that you are storing in your 12th house. You have been told that you always have to suppress. You always have to suppress your emotion, your feelings. You could be in a um, clandestine relationship right now. You, you could be in a marriage and yet you, your heart belongs to someone else. And you can't step up. You can't step up and say, you know what, even though I'm in a marriage and that relationship ran its course, I see myself with this other individual because the other individual is who my soulmate is. But you feel guilty. You, you blame yourself. It's nothing to blame yourself for, right? Things like that in life happen. So this forgiveness card, which is number 96, right? Which is number 96, which is further reduced to 15, right? Further reduces to six. Remember when I was talking about the devil card being 15? So you are struggling to forgive yourself, right? And this patience is not the patience that you have towards other people. This patience is the patience that you need to have towards itself. And I think this sacred soul sister card that I have to read with other cards at the end of the day, when it comes to your self-love, your self-care, when it comes to doing things for yourself, honoring your truth. I talked about a clandestine relationship. Maybe this is something you're not honoring. Maybe you're in a straight marriage, like you are married to a woman, or if you're a woman, you're married to a man. Perhaps you're, you are homosexual, for all I know. And you're not going to come out and say that truth because you feel guilty, you have a pride, you were taught something, and you blame yourself for being this non-committed person in a relationship, and you carry a lot of guilt within you. All you have to do is reach out to your tribe. You don't have to face this alone. And this forgiveness card, though, I took this from the bottom of the deck. It says, I acknowledge that 
harboring resentment blocks the flow of love. Resentment, guilt, blame. All of this, my darling, if you don't forgive yourself, will block the flow, the abundance of love, and will block new beginnings. I'm telling you, your reading is so straightforward. So, let's take some tarot cards. Let's wrap up, right? These are your shadow. Let's take some tarot cards. Spirit, what else can you tell us regarding Capricorn and their shadow self? You have some amazing information on the board. You've got the Knight of Swords. You've got the Knight of Swords. You are fighting. You're fighting a battle with yourself, with, your, with a blindfold on. You are holding on to things that no longer serve you, Capricorn. You're holding on to a template that no longer serve you. You now got the Four of Pentacles. See, Four of Pentacles is the quintessential holding on to old belief system card in tarot. Let's take one more card from this tarot deck and then I'm going to consult one more tarot deck and we're going to bring this reading to a wrap. The Magician. I love, love the fact the Magician is on the, on the board. Bottom of this deck that I just consulted you have the moon card. I'm going to take that card because I, I feel like that card has me. Moon is about our maternal instinct. Moon is about our mother. Moon is it also is about our inside, like the feminine side of our soul, right? And I think being a Capricorn, being the alpha male or the alpha female that you are, you are only honoring your masculine side, which talks about providing which talks about taking responsibility every time you nurture yourself or you want to nurture yourself you feel guilty you blame yourself you think that's not what you should be doing okay my darling you got some amazing amazing cards let's read these cards together so you have the knight of swords and the two of swords this is the problem. Look at these two cards coming out of completely from two different decks, right? This individual, this Knight of Swords, his face is uh, it's uh, and what's the word I'm looking for? Is almost half swallowed by a bear. So he has, for lack of a better term, sort of a blindfold on his eyes. So he can't see, and yet he's wielding his his sword, right? He's fighting a battle. Same thing with this fella, little fella. I don't know whether he's blindfolded or not, but he also is disproportionately fighting a snake that is way bigger than him, and he has no help. And this is what the Spirit is saying. You don't have to go through this battle by yourself. You have a tribe. Maybe this tribe is within your family. Maybe this tribe is within your friend circle. I don't know where this tribe is, but you need to seek them out. You need to consult them. You need to surround yourself with this tribe so that you don't have to be battle-weary all the time. The next two cards is about the Four of Pentacles, which is holding on to belief system, right? That no longer serves you. And you have the Page of Pentacles, right? So you are fairly the student. You may think that you have learned everything there is to learn, on this planet but what spirit is saying as soon as you let go of your old belief system you become the page of pentacles where you become a student again and you learn new things about life new things about the cosmos new things about human existence and relationship and so on and so forth you have the magician and the moon this is what you're fearful of my darling magician is all about manifesting a new beginning or manifesting new beginnings. You are fearful. You're fearful of your feminine energy. If this is not a gender specific reading, you could be a man and this could apply to you because we all have feminine and masculine energy within us. You are fearful of that passive, receptive, that, nurt that nurturing, that self nurturing energy within you. And that is what's blocking you. Because let me tell you something, Capricorn, you could be the biggest alpha in the room, but until such time 
You tap into your feminine energy, the creative energy of the human existence of our soul. Manifestation, which is represented by magician, abundance, whatever that you're asking from the universe will not come to you unless you're in a receptive mode. Manifestations will not come to fruition. I'll tell you why. You can chase something and it is absolutely required for the masculine side to go out, to seek out something, to chase success and so on. But until such time, you learn that chasing alone is not enough. You have to be a chaser as well as a runner or a receiver. You have to be a giver and a runner. You have to be the masculine and the feminine simultaneously. And that's the, that's the lesson we learn. That's the lesson we learn in your human form. That's the paradox. That's the duality, right? If you ever wondered, why are we on this planet? This is why we are on this planet. So you now have the justice card, this card number 11, and you have the devil card. We talked about devil quite a few times, which is the number 15. Where else have we seen that number? 96, which reduces to 15, right? Forgiveness, my love. Forgiveness card came out twice. Whether you forgive yourself, you forgive somebody else, you forgive somebody in your sacred soul tribe, whether you forgive your upbringing, you forgive your circumstance, whatever it is, this, this resentment that you harbor within yourself, this, this shame and guilt that you harbor within yourself, the fact that you blame yourself for not having the life that you've always desired. Look, it doesn't matter what happened to you in the past. I shouldn't say it that way. It does matter what happened to you in the past because this devil energy taught you to be resilient, this devil energy taught you to be self-sufficient. So I wouldn't let go of that. I mean, it had its purpose in your life. Now time, the time has come for you to surround yourself with the people that will honor you, will respect you, will take care of you, so that you can finally take the, the lessons you've learned from your past, which is presented by de devil, and you take the new beginnings, the new people, their wisdom in your life. And with the justice card, you actually balance the two, right? Capricorn, and that's the energy. And that's how you have to work with your shadow self. In terms of signs that came out on board, I am looking at justice as Libra with the devil. Clearly, that's you, Capricorn, with the moon, Pisces, and with the magician. I'm looking at more Aries and Gemini. So those are the signs you could have on your natal chart or those are the signs that you could be dealing with in your life. All that said, Capricorn, you know I love you. You know that I want nothing but the best of everything for you. So until next time we see each other, I hope that you find the solace and the direction and the peace and happiness and self-love within you to forgive yourself. Take care.